I now call upon the Honourable Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Performance, Monitoring and Evaluation. The Honourable Deputy Minister. Thank you, Chairperson, Honourable Ministers and Deputy Ministers, Honourable Members of Parliament, Comrades, Ladies and Gentlemen. The 37th Commemoration of the Youth Month is a fresh reminder of the sacrifices made by the youth of 1976. They laid down their lives so that you and I can enjoy the freedom we enjoy today. As we, as we appreciate their efforts, we resolve to that through working with a young generation of today. We do this because we understand that it is only through involving young people as instruments of change and development that we can sustain the gains uh, ripped by our democracy. Available estimates show that we have many young people across the globe compared to children and adults. In the world of youth, 15 to 25 years, they constitute 1.1 billion or 18% of the global population today. Youth and children together, 0 to 24 years, constitute 40% of the wealth population. In most African countries, including Kenya, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, and Zambia, children and youth constitute above or over 60% of the total population, with the young people constituting about a third, 30%. In South Africa, children and youth constitute 70% of the population, whilst youth aged between 14 and 35 years constitute 41.2% of the population. In the Southern Africa Development Community, SADC region, those below the age of 35 uh, constitute 76 percent of the population. Therefore, this then indicates that the population of Africa, the population of our region, is indeed young and getting young. The proportion of this youth population is projected to peak at 35.6 percent of the total population by 2032. The growth that we're experiencing as an African continent will only stagnate in 2032. So it means as we move along, we'll continue to see the growth of younger people. Again, the 2011 United Nations Economic Commission for Africa report confirmed that the youth population in Africa will generally, generally remain high by 2050. I put this years because it will then indicate why we need to invest, invest as countries to ensure, therefore, that we are able then to turn the corner and ensure that we prepare these young people for the future. This trend of an increasing youthful population happened despite sub-regional variations as well as the declining number of pets. This is called the demographic dividend window. Invest in it and you'll indeed see the dividends and you'll reap the fruits later. If you don't invest in it, then it means it's going to be a peril and what we are going to see is the demographic disaster. The demographics which I just highlighted clearly indicate that the youth population will continue to grow in absolute numbers. It is therefore undisputed that young people deserve a bigger share of development uh, investments. Therefore, addressing youth issues should remain silent for the global community, African governments, the SADC region, and the South African community. This is essential considering the fact that the majority of these youth account for the large share of the working population and the hurdles they experience need to be attended to during their period before they enter adulthood. The increased youth population demand that all of us must seize an opportunity to invest fully in this future generation in order to fully reap the benefits of development. On the other hand, lack of investment will expose us to sorry state where development gains are reversed. Planning and the right investment in youth will empower them to make choices that are good for themselves, their communities, and also for the world. In response to the building of youth population, there have been activities that are geared towards addressing the continuous challenges they experience, such as poverty uh, uh, reduction, poor access to education, unemployment, and then also decreasing of the exposure to risky lives and behaviors violence and conflict, etc., to be ended. We have the opportunity to fully develop the potential of youth so that they can contribute effectively to the world's development agenda. This conviction can only 
happen if there is a commitment to prioritize youth development and to empower and anchor the youth to become strong and accountable leaders as well as an asset for development in the global arena. And I agree with Kofi Annan when he says, and I quote, young people should be in the forefront of global change and innovation. Empowered, they can be agents of development and peace. If, however, they are left on the society's margins, all of us will be impoverished. Let us ensure, therefore, that all young people have every opportunity to participate fully in the lives of their societies. As they will celebrate the Youth Month under the government's chosen theme, working together for youth development and a drug-free South Africa, we are mindful that if we do not address this problem, our youth will not be able to enjoy the fruits of freedom and which the past generation fought for very hard. Equally, we join the parliament in celebrating the, the, this month under the theme that the parliament chose, youth at the center of economic opportunities. In preparing for this demographic window, the president, uh, Comrade uh, Jacob uh, Zuma, will be championing the implementation of the country's youth development agenda in order to direct the efforts of various stakeholders. In this regard, the president has mandated a presidential youth working group to be established to afford him an opportunity to interact with relevant stakeholders in the youth development space. As a platform for government, civil society, private sector, and the institution of higher learning, the presidential youth working group will be guided by the identified big five priorities, which last week, a meeting of all youth leadership in the country attended by all youth organizations, including political youth wings of all our political parties, civil society, youth in business, and so forth. They agreed to the following priorities, as will be referred to as the big five. The first priority is the youth economic participation. In it, it will be both the employment creation uh, environment, enabling environment continuously and investment in that direction. And secondly, it will be around the issues of entrepreneurship amongst young people. Because statistics indicate that young people, they start their companies, within two years, those companies disappear. So therefore, we need to invest more also in creating a number of entrepreneurs that will arise out of this particular investment as one of the priorities that we ought to, to, learn, to, to, to invest in. The presidential working group also plays emphasis on job creation, uh, as already indicated. Specifically, the implementation of the recently signed Youth Employment Accord will be at the center of ensuring youth economic participation. The Youth Accord serves as an valuable and meaningful approach to addressing the challenges of youth employment. This process, which is being led by the Minister of Economic Development, Honorable Minister Ibrahim Patel, has been uh, to all social partners, and they've all signed it on the 18th of April 2013. The accord emphasizes on six commitments. One, improving the skills base. Just want to explain here that the amount of money that the Minister of Finance announced as the youth wage subsidy is now no longer inexistent in that name. The amount of the money that was announced, the 5 billion rand, is going to go into the youth uh, employment accord to then begin specifically to look at the following programs. The programs will be the improvement of the skills based. The second program will be giving young people work exposure so that they can be prepared to go and work. It also will be involving young people to, to in the national youth services and who are busy engaging with various government departments, particularly the National Defense Force, to then see if some of the young people cannot be channeled in that direction, not for military training purposes, but for training on other skills and practical skills that are on the offer within the Army. So the money will also be going in that direction. Also, the money will be intensifying and expanding on the public employment program, such as in the expanded public works programs to increase the intake in the health workers or the brigades to increase the intake in the NARISEC programs to increase the intake in the community works programs also to increase the, in, in the intake in that. We'll also be using the money to support youth entrepreneurship and youth cooperatives as part of the entrepreneur balloon. And then also working with the private sector in the promotion on uh, 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 work creation at the work employment, particularly on those areas that uh, already they've signed in and, and agreed that they will be. Additionally, 
the ANC-led government is already committing towards addressing on these priorities. For example, the Department of Economic Development made a financial commitment to support the growth of young entrepreneurs and an amount of 3 billion rand, that is separate from the other money that is going to go into the employment accord, has been set aside, reinvested, and then it will be in the Industrial Development Corporation, IDC, and also with the Small Enterprise Finance Agency, SEFA, which will then be put aside, and all those young people who wants to participate in the entrepreneurial world and in activities will then have to go to the NYDA, uh, where they are busy agreeing uh, in a uh, memorandum of understanding, and the I NYDA will serve as the conveyor belt by screening and making recommendations of these young entrepreneurs to access loan funds offered by IDC and SEFA. NYDA itself is no longer going to be offering any loans going forward. They will continue with the grant system where they can give you up to 100,000 for small, small survivalist type of businesses. But for those who want to grow beyond that, there is this platform then that NYDA will be there as a conveyor belt to assist young people to participate meaningfully in the economy and to create jobs as they grow themselves. The second priority of the, the big five is the education and skills development. And nothing can really replace education. And young people must just take this thing and embrace that. Education can open all the doors, and an education is a weapon that can defeat poverty, unemployment, and inequality in society. So we have to ensure that the investment that is already going there, please grab and ensure that you stay in school. And then if you are done, develop skills so that you can prepare yourself better for the, for the future. Yes, we have to then deal a lot in terms of dealing with equality and, and then so, so that we could then do, because in terms of access, 90% of young people are in our schools. In the whole Saturday countries, last week in Swaziland, all countries said 90% access has been achieved. All of the countries in Saturday were saying, the quality is a challenge, and all of us as countries, we must now begin to develop programs to attend and address the quality, so that the quality is of essence. The other third area is the professionalization of the youth work, which will be focusing on recognizing youth work as a profession by encouraging universities to open it up as a career of choice, but also to build a capacity and a body of knowledge by establishing a professional association so that more and more people who start youth clubs, children's groups, and what have you, can also then be recognized as a skill by university. The fourth one is the priority on substance abuse and violence uh, prevention, that we need really to help the children from drowning in alcohol, from drowning in drugs, and then, and then into the teak or nyaupe or hupa, whatever it is called, from one era to the other, and really save the generation from drowning so that then we can then invest uh, into them as a better. And the last one, and a priority that was agreed upon, is the National Youth Service, which will have to be redetermined so that young people can be active and be involved and, and in this world. And I will therefore make a call to the youth to take a responsibility, grab on these opportunities, and then indeed position themselves for the opportunities that government continues to render in their direction. Stay in the school, be educated, develop your schools. The ANC-led government is indeed investing in that area. Grab the opportunity and stay in there. But that can only be achieved if parents, communities, and society support them. And indeed, we encourage them to go on and, and really be, be skilled. Next year, you have the responsibility as young people to participate in the democratic processes by applying for the IDs. From the age of 16, you can do so. And if you did, please go and collect your ID from the Home Affairs. There's a stack and stack of copies that are sitting there so that you can be registered and as a voter, and we can then freely vote in the general elections next year. As I end my speech, I will just want to quote on, the, on this one, by, uh, a quote by Frederick von Sieler, and says, keep true to the dreams of your youth as young people. And in honoring the youth of 1976, June 16, uh, we say to you, you did define the cause of our struggle, and we knew that it was going to be a struggle to be paid with an ultimate price, and you did with your lives. And as Amilka Cabral said, tell no lies, claim no easy victims. Those who claim to be have been in the struggle must just know 
that that struggle must be properly defined as a liberation struggle, as a revolutionary struggle, because the posters only says we were in struggle. But tell us, what struggle was it? Tell no lies, claim no easy victories. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister.